Hello and welcome to the V2 Football Podcast. I'm Chris Lappin and I'm delighted to be joined on the line by Cardiff City Under-21 manager and one of the fastest rising coaches in the game, Kevin Nicholson. You having a good evening? Absolutely fine. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> fine. And, uh, and just trying to enjoy a break at the moment. Mm. Um, rest up, obviously, before the new season begins in, uh, in July. So, no, it's fast coming round, but um, so, so trying even, to uh, enjoy, enjoy a break. Yeah, so even at a youth team level, you have a... Good, probably six weeks off in between seasons, or yeah, we uh, yeah, we it's exactly the same really as the first team. Uh, mm. The under 21s kind of followed suit in terms of having a similar uh, length of break. Um, so we broke up around mid mid May, and then obviously we were going to return right at the end of this month, at the end of June, for a couple of days before we started training on the 1st of July. So, um, yeah, they get it. Good kind of six to seven weeks off, mm. um, the players. But obviously, within that period, and particularly nowadays, the way football is, the players are still working um, and doing and doing certain bits away from the club and, and the off season programs that they have to adhere to. So uh, they come back in good shape. Yeah. So you know, obviously, you, you, you know, you um, you encourage the players to get a break as well because that's important to recharge, you know, physically and mentally. But they. Uh, they have off-season conditioning programs that they, they undertake in that period as well. So. Right, so for for the people who don't know, what league do the Cardiff under twenty ones play in? Is it the Southern League? We play. We currently play in the Professional Development League uh, Two. Yeah. With the, the reason for two being that obviously academy, as everyone will know, academies nowadays are categorised, um, <clears throat> and currently Cardiff's academy is in category two. Mm. How did it go this season? How did you move to Cardiff come about? Is the plan to get involved with the first team in the next season or so? For myself? Yeah. I'm still in around the first team. Basically, I obviously uh, started off this season to get a whirlwind year, actually. Yeah. I started off this season as under 18 head coach, if you like, manager, and then I, uh, which was what I was brought to the club to do. Mm-hmm. And then uh, with the changeovers in, in the, the first team 
things. I got I, I found my way um, into a first team coaching role, which I ended up for, for six months of the season in the championship, and obviously that was a great experience to work with top players, you know, championship and players that play in the Premier League on a daily basis. And I was part of the first team coaching staff under the new manager, obviously um, Russell Slade, and. Um, so and then obviously that opportunity came about in February to, to manage a team again and, and, and take the under 21 to lead the under 21 group. So um, I'm still involved on match days and I, I still try and um, you know uh, help the staff and, and be part, like I say, of, of a match day. And, um, and that I'm sure that will continue again next season. Yeah. <coughs> um, who are the players you think Cardiff City fans should be looking forward to seeing coming through in the next season or so? <laughs> It's always hard to pinpoint individual yeah. names, and I wouldn't want to do that because that would put too much pressure on some of the younger players yeah. um, coming through. But there's absolutely no doubt that the, there is a, um, uh, uh, you know, a good amount of uh, young talent mm. within our academy at this moment in time, um, which you know we've just got to nurture and be patient with, and, and, and you know manage correctly and, and bring through at the right time. But yeah, there's, there's certainly. Uh, Three or four players that that, that, that were, you know, I think they've got a very, very good chance of um, progressing. Hopefully, uh, emulating players that that kind of have produced in the past mm. um, and go on and play in the first team because you know that's the whole aim of the academy and that's you know the whole reason why staff were working within the academy is because we want to help these young players and, and develop them and, and hopefully you know that allows them to go and achieve their dreams of playing for. And if we go back to the beginning of your career, how did you first get involved in football? I started playing obviously from a young age. It's all I knew when I was younger, you uh, kicking a ball around and that, you know, uh, down the field and at school and whatever. But yeah, and then I obviously had an opportunity to sign to Derby County, and it, you know, which was then a centre of excellence mm. when it turned into a cabinet. At the age of eight, and, and then about eight years later, I was still there at Derby County, you know, and. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and I had a great eight years there as an academy player. I learned a lot as a young player. Um, left Derby at 16, uh, went to a few other clubs, um, ended up signing for Kidderman to Harriers, who at the time were in the old Division 3. Yeah. Um, I was a youth team player there, thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, and then at the same time as I was playing for Kidderman, I started coaching. So I actually started coaching at 17. And then gradually started to turn my focus more towards the coaching and come away from the playing um, because I saw it as an opportunity to make a career out again. So you've mentioned your previous at Derby. You were helped the likes of Will Hughes come through. Um, is that your favourite part of the job, seeing players come through to the first team? Well, certainly a great deal of satisfaction when you see a young player that you've worked with or had a part to play in that comes through and plays you know, out, out there on the field you know, in front of could be 20, 30,000 people on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, there's nothing better than seeing that, absolutely. I've obviously had, you know, I've been privileged to have seen that quite a few times now at mm. the different clubs that I've been at. So, um, yeah, very, very satisfying and, and rewarding part of the job. And I'm sure every other youth team coach or development coach, if you like, in, in this country would, would say and feel exactly the same about that. Um, you know, that, that, like I said before, that's why uh, we're working within these academies and, and we're, we're trying to develop these players to hope, hope that they go and achieve their aspirations and that's to go on and be a professional football player. So, yeah, yeah. it's absolutely uh, fantastic when you see um, a young player that you've worked with from a very, very young age go on and, and, and like I say, achieve, achieve great things. Yeah, I've heard that you're one of the first coaches to achieve the FA Elite Coaches Award. Uh, what did it take to achieve this, and how has it affected your career? Yeah, well, we, again, I was just, you know very fortunate enough to be selected by the English FA. Um, it's around, it was around uh, four years ago now. Hmm. Um, Brand new course, 
course, which was designed as a level five coaching <coughs> qualification. So yeah. they wanted to design a coaching qualification that sat above the A license. They selected, like I say, a handful of coaches from around the country, from different clubs, different backgrounds. Um, maybe also people that they had seen work coach on the A license that they've been impressed with. Mm. And we came together as a group and we worked together for 18 months on and off. Um, you know, some kind of one day get together somewhere, uh, you know, one week residentials. Um, and, and some of them took place at obviously the new St. George's Park, which was, which was great. Mm. Um, and no, it was a fantastic qualification, great insight to what it takes to work at the top level. We had a number of um, high profile managers and coaches come in and speak. Yeah. Uh, during the course, um, and just took a great deal from it, and, and I tried to obviously uh, take what I learned from that course and involve it into my day-to-day work um, at the clubs that I've been at, and obviously now at Cardiff with the other 21s, um, and obviously continue doing that in the future. Um, so, like I say, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very high qualification. It's the highest coaching qualification mm. available with the English FA, and it sits, like I say, above the A license alongside as well the UEFA Pro license at level five and um, you know my next step now which I always um, aim to achieve was to start the pro license to the age of 30 I'm 29 now so I aim to start the pro license um, next year so yeah. um, hopefully by you know, the age of 30 I'll have achieved all qualifications that are available to me. Would you like to uh, oh, oh sorry yeah. Would you ever like to work overseas? Um, I don't think you can ever not think about doing anything as a coach, mm. particularly as a young coach. Um, the biggest thing for me is I want to coach at the highest level. Now, if that means one day maybe going abroad in order to achieve that, then, then I would do it. But as like I say, I think as a young coach, you've got to be very open-minded these days. There's so many different opportunities, there's so many different um, avenues that you can go down. Um, coaching management, coach education, there's all different types um, of pathways. Um, but I'm very happy at the moment with what I'm doing, and uh, you know, I've got a job to do here at Cardiff, and I'm, and, uh, and, uh, <coughs> and, um, I'm like, thoroughly enjoying it, the challenge of that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, in the future, uh, to coach abroad would be interesting because what you do is you get to learn about different cultures and, um, and work with players, you know, that maybe speak a different language and you might have to learn a new language. So it's all, it's all good good experience as a, as a young coach coming through, I'm sure, if I was to do that one day. Um, in your experience, do you feel that sometimes youth team coaches put results above learning in this country? Or has that changed? Um, it's hard to say, you know, everyone has their own way of doing things, don't they? You know, I don't have to speak for anybody else. Um, mm. I'll only speak for myself and that is that you know the teams that I've worked with I like them to play um, a good style of football mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> what I regard as proper football um, and you know if that results in winning games then, then it results in winning games it's not what you set out to do because the aim is like I say to develop each, each player individually mm-hmm. um, whether you win games or not under 18 level really is insignificant in the, in the big, amongst the bigger picture yeah with the bigger picture being like I say producing players because that's what the academy is there for and that's what an under 18 team is there for and that's what an under 21 team is there for and an under 14 team etc etc that's that's what them teams are there for so um, like I say I, I don't know you know the general consensus around this country um, I think there's a big focus nowadays on the development and that's good to see because that's what it should be about and if winning comes you know if winning comes um, on the end of good development and good coaching then that's a bonus that's the way I see it <laughs> uh, um, recently the FA has promised to plough money into the grassroots football have you seen a recent improvement in the game at uh, well obviously working at you know, obviously the elite level at the moment, like mm. I am, you don't tend to see much of the grassroots level because obviously a lot of your time, day to day, seven days a week, occupied working with the, the, the players that you you know you paid to work with. So mm. 
Mm. It's a difficult question for me to answer. I yeah. know that the FA are putting a lot of um, you know money into the into the grassroots, and obviously that's excellent to see. I think the biggest thing is at grassroots level is that there's two things. One is that the players, even the players, enjoy their football. Mm-hmm. You know uh, that that is hugely important. And the second thing is that they play without any fear whatsoever, because at that age there is no reason to have fear about anything. Um, as you grow older, you might have the odd little fear here and there, um, but that's that's part of growing up and that's part of life. But when you're younger, like I say, the two biggest things: enjoyment. The enjoyment factor is huge, mm-hmm. and uh, you make you know you're, the coaches at that level making sure that the players play without any fear whatsoever. Just go out, enjoy it, play as you can, play as you want to, and um, and that's the key, really. So uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, again over time like everything will improve I'm sure and, and, and I'm sure that's happening already and, um, who are your managerial heroes and the most influential on your career um, are you talking about coaches or are you talking about players well who, who, who are well, who, uh, uh, no more managers and coaches Yeah, who, who, who's been the biggest influence on your career so, well, I mean obviously I've, I've, I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of good managers mm. coaches and like anything, you take you take the good, you take the not so good and the bad out of everybody, and you try and mould it into your own style. I've, I've, I've learned from every single manager that I've worked with, and it's been a privilege to work with the manager that I've worked with. You know, yeah. um, managers such as you know Nigel Clough at Derby County, Paul Tisdale, Exeter, and now Russell Slater at Cardiff. Mm. I've learned I've learned from every single one of them, and, and, and they've, they've been they've all been fantastic with me. They've given me great opportunities. Um, to show what I can do as a human coach, and that's all you ask for. Um, so I've got to say that you know that they have been my role models as I'm starting to grow up as a as a coach, hmm. and manager myself. Hopefully one day. Um, yeah, and then obviously you know you, you like a like the player, young players should have role models as a young coach. You have other role models as well that you see. Um, for me, this season, obviously Eddie Howe, you know, yeah, because. You know what a fantastic job he's done at Bournemouth to take them from where they were to where they are now, which is in the Premier League um, over a, over a period of time. Um, you know, win LMA Manager of the Year. Um, you know, and, and he's, and he's a young, he's class, I was classed as a young manager. So, but you know, like I say, all these all these people that I've worked with, I took a great deal from. I've learned a lot from, and they've really inspired me to to carry on improving as a coach and as a manager and, and hopefully one day get to their level yeah alright um, I've got one last question um, the under yeah. one, under 21s play this summer um, how do you think the young Lions will do I, I, I expect to do very well they've got an excellent young squad mm. they play some very good football under Gareth Southgate um, I really do hope for English football and for the English FA that, that they go out and win the tournament mm. um Sets up the winning goal. So. <laughs> right, so I've, I've really enjoyed speaking to you today. Um, 